Hi everyone, Bruce Dixon here. This is excerpted and paraphrased from a text of a speech, The Invention of Presidium by the Inventor, by Dr. Marco Ruggiero, MD, PhD, in February of 2021. A link to the full text is in the notes below. The first page of this PDF summarizes Dr. Ruggiero's 41 years of research and work as a radiologist and biochemical researcher and inventor. A prior video in this series summarizes what we know in 2021 about the effects on living systems of electromagnetic frequencies, EMFs, in increasing amounts, numbers, and durations of exposure. The video explains how the topic is much larger than only 5G. The increases are affecting plants, insects, birds, and humans. The focus of this video is on what Presidium is and what it does according to the inventor. It's a new product, only six months old, so we're still learning about it. EMFs in increasing amounts increasing numbers of frequencies and in increasing duration of exposure affect the most vulnerable cells in our body first. These are the cells of our microbiome, not only in our gut, but in and around each internal organ, which has its own somewhat unique microbiome. While our whole body has an immune system, Beneficial bacteria in our biome are far too simple to have any immune defenses against excessive EMFs. The microbes of our microbiome are 10 times more numerous than our human cells. Collectively, they have hundreds of times more genes than the 22,000 genes in our human DNA. Our microbiome is involved in the development and function of all human organs and systems. Any damage to our microbiome potentially leads to altered function and lowered function of our organs and systems. The prior video summarized how increased amounts, duration, and exposure to any and all EMFs creates more free radicals in living systems. The video also explains why free radicals are so hungry to attach themselves inappropriately to other molecules and cells. DNA is especially vulnerable to radical attack. Free radicals can easily add themselves to double bonds in the DNA bases. When they do, free radicals cause unnatural substances. These can diffuse through the body and affect other organs, especially in downstream interactions of unknown quantity and quality. It took Dr. Ruggiero to ask this question. If greater resistance to radiation is a good thing, which microbes have the superpower of radiation resistance? Can something be made which transfers this superpower to the cells of our microbiome and to human cells? Hey, it's worth a try. Dr. Rougier went looking for the microbes most resistant to EMFs. Exactly which microbes these are is a business secret. Presidium contains these special microbes extremely resistant to the harmful effects of electromagnetic fields. These incredible microbes survive exposure to gamma rays up to 6,400 grays, the unit of measure for radiations. For reference, the median human lethal radiation dose calculated from data from Nagasaki is around 3 grays. In other words, these microbes are about 2,000 times more resistant than humans. In theory, they can survive radiation from a nuclear blast. These microbes have already been used in the nutrition of astronauts. Why? Moving through space, unprotected by our atmosphere and the Earth's magnetic fields, astronauts are exposed to larger amounts of harmful EMF 
radiation. Presidium is Dr. Ruggiero's best guess how to transfer the radiation-resistant properties of these microbes to our microbiome cells, to our human cells, or to both. Presidium is designed to help prevent harm and support repair to our cells from excessive EMFs. Presidium is a food, not a drug. It has nutritional aspects supportive for reducing normal inflammation, antioxidant support, and immune support. On page 5 of the PDF, Dr. Ruggiero talks about a surprising finding. Presidium appears to have the most benefits in reducing the negative effects of arsenic poisoning. This is significant because arsenic damages cells in a similar way to how ionizing radiation damages cells by knocking off the electrons and creating free radicals. In the future, if other products like Presidium are introduced, they can be compared to Presidium in effectiveness by how well they counter arsenic poisoning. A natural probiotic made from the silica-rich plant Equisetum is a big part of Presidium. It was news to me how silica and DNA talk to each other. Mr. Google tells me he has 40 million pages for the search silica and DNA. This means it's a big topic among biochemical researchers. Dr. Ruggiero's guess is the silica DNA conversation is the mechanism by which immunity to EMFs is transferred from his radiation-resistant bacteria to the human microbiome. Many people are asking, are EMFs from cell phones and Wi-Fi bad for us? This is a common question, but not yet a good question. We have to start over. A wide range and variety of EMFs are bad for living systems. Any increase in EMFs is bad for living systems. It's not just radioactive EMFs which are bad for us. EMFs are generally bad for us. Conversely, the lower the dose and the shorter the duration of EMF exposure, the better. How are EMFs harmful? They create free radicals. These disrupt molecules, disrupt our DNA, and then downstream interfere with how the body expects proteins to fold at the molecule level. Even though the early frequencies used in 5G are not close to ionizing radiation, any increase in EMFs increases free radical production in us. This affects the simplest living creatures first. This is one of the best guesses why we are losing insects, bees, and bird populations. 2011 was the last year a good deal of research was done on this topic. Based on a review of studies published up until 2011, the International Agency for Research on Cancer classified radio wave radiation as, quote, possibly carcinogenic to humans, unquote. This was based on evidence of a possible increase in risk for brain tumors among cell phone users and among evidence for other types of cancer. After 2011, research on the harmful effects of EMS was effectively banned by corporations. How? How do they do this? Corporations simply don't fund this kind of research anymore. Researchers want to be paid for their efforts. When corporations stop funding an area of research, this tells the research community to stay away from researching those topics. Only in the last three years has some research resumed on proving how EMFs and 5G are either beneficial, neutral, or detrimental to human health at what duration and at what doses. In studies published in 2018 by the National Toxicology Program and by the Ramazzini Institute in Italy, the researchers exposed groups of lab rats and mice to radio waves over their entire bodies for many hours a day, starting before birth and continuing for most or all of their natural lives. Both studies 
found an increased risk of uncommon heart tumors. The American study reported increased risks of certain types of tumors in the brain and in the adrenal glands. Several other studies have looked at possible links between cell phone use and tumors in humans. The 13-country Interphone study, the largest case control study done to date, looked at cell phone use among more than 5,000 people who developed brain tumors and a similar group of people without tumors. In the group of people who used their cell phones the most, the risk of tumors was increased. A large study of nearly 800,000 women in the United Kingdom examined the risk of developing brain tumors over a seven-year period in relation to phone use. This study found a link between long-term cell phone use and non-cancerous tumors on the main nerve leading from the inner ear to the brain. For these reasons, an unprecedented expansion of 5G cellular networks with corporations shielded from liability from damages is at the center of public interest. Telecom networks use several different radio wave frequencies. For the first phase of 5G rollout, only lower frequencies in the higher range are proposed. This is kind of a Trojan horse strategy. The new technology initially looks like a gift. The initial frequencies are low. However, in a few years, much higher radio frequencies are planned to be implemented. The new bands are well above the ultra-high frequency ranges, having wavelengths in the one centimeter to millimeter ranges. These later bands have traditionally been used only for military radar and microwave links and other uses known since World War II to be irritating and harmful to humans. If you will, let's review the difference between in vitro and in vivo experiments. In vitro means in a dish. In vivo means in a living body. Mostly this means in mice. For demonstrating the possibly harmful effects of EMFs on bacteria, I imagine the in a dish experiments go something like this. Take 20 shallow petri dishes. Put in the water and gelatin. Bacteria love to eat gelatin. Exactly how each bacteria grows in gelatin is well known and documented with pictures researchers refer to. The same bacteria is put in all 20 dishes. 10 dishes are separated out. Each of these 10 dishes are surrounded by four cell phones, all turned on. The bacteria in the other 10 dishes have no cell phone exposure in close proximity. After three to seven days, the two groups of dishes are checked. How naturally or unnaturally did the bacteria in close proximity to cell phones grow compared to those relatively free of all EMF exposure? High school students can and do such experiments. A study published by Swedish scientists in 2019 analyzed 94 relevant papers performing such investigations. 80% of the in vivo studies in mice showed biological effects due to exposure. 58% of the in vitro studies demonstrated significant biological effects. The word significant here means unnatural and probably not beneficial. What about humans? A study published in May 2020 by authors from several international research institutions, including the Albert Einstein College of Medicine in the U.S., present evidence 5G mobile networking technology will affect not only the skin and the eyes, as commonly believed, it will also have adverse effects as well. Here I wish to depart a bit from Dr. Ruggiero's text. Let's ask which country is the most progressive on national legislation limiting health hazardous things? This will be Switzerland. 
They have the longest history of political legislation to ban or limit hazardous inventions. Dr. Ruggiero does not mention this. However, from my 15 years of Waldorf adventures, this is probably due to the Swiss's 100-year history of Rudolf Steiner's legacy in K-12 education and in medicine. Thanks to Waldorf education, the Swiss and the Finns in Finland are the most conscious and knowledgeable of what is and is not beneficial for children for the next seven generations. Hence, the Swiss are in the lead in legislation to limit EMF exposure to humans. The Alara Principle Let's talk about Alara. Now before you name your baby daughter this, let's remember that this is now an acronym standing for as low as reasonably achievable. Several cities and major countries have established their own precautionary limits based on the principle of minimizing exposure in order to avoid as yet unknown hazards. For example, exposure limits in Switzerland and Italy are a hundred times lower than the limits proposed by the International Commission on Non-Ionizing Radiation Protection. Scientific American. This is a scientific journal with such a high reputation, even Albert Einstein published his articles in this journal. In 2019, an article was published entitled, We Have No Reason to Believe 5G is Safe. It concludes, quote, the technology is coming, yet contrary to what people say, there could be health risks." Unquote. Which people are saying what here? The people who say there are no risks points to telecom corporations and their 5G marketers. If this concerns you, what can you do? Nutrient-dense dietary supplements to enhance immune resistance to invisible radiation of many frequencies are likely to be beneficial for us. Dr. Ruggiero concludes the text of his speech this way. Presidium is designed to support the body against the harmful effects of EMF fields. There are no other products like Presidium. It is unique among the scores of other products he has developed. As far as he can tell, it is unique in the world. Its formula is unique, and the way it's made is unique. Its method of manufacture is proprietary. Because of its uniqueness and originality, it is the subject of a patent application in the U.S. And this concludes a paraphrase of Dr. Ruggiero's text about the invention of Presidium. Thank you for your time.